Amen. I heard a pastor this week say these words. It's a, it got in my spirit. Now I want to give it to you. He said these words, I'm bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. <laughs> I am bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Man, and that pastor is exactly right. That whatever you have on the inside, his name is Jesus Christ, is bigger than any circumstance, any situation, any sickness, any darkness, any family disputes, anything that you are going through right now in your life. Y'all listen to me. God is bigger on the inside than whatever's going on on the outside of you in your life right now. Somebody give God praise right there. Don't miss that one. Don't miss that one. Now I want you to turn to your neighbor real quick and I want you to testify. I'm bigger on the inside than I am the outside. Yeah, I'm big. Tell somebody else. I'm bigger on the inside than I am the outside. Yeah, bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. And this pastor that was saying that he wasn't a little bitty man. He was a big old joker on the outside. But he said, I'm just going to tell you I'm bigger on the inside than I am the outside. I love that. If you have your Bible really quick, I, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. And if I had to title today's message, this sermon, it would be made whole. It would be titled, Be Made Whole. Be Made Whole. Everybody say, Be Made Whole. Be Made Whole. Luke 17, verse 12 through 19 is where I'm going to take my text from. I'm reading out of the King James. I want you to listen. This is profound. This is crazy. How many of y'all know the Holy Ghost wrecked the first service? <laughs> I mean, they were wrecked in the first service, man. God showed up like he always does. Watch this. God's here whether you're here or not. <laughs> God is here whether you're here or not. And, but God wants you to participate in what he's doing right now. God does not want you to be a spectator on the outside looking in at the God potential on the inside. God wants you to be a participator on the inside. And watch this. Whatever you have going on on the inside, come on, help me now, will eventually come out on the outside. My granny was right about that. Luke 17, verse 12 through 19. The Bible says, I love this. As he entered a certain village, there met him ten men. Everybody say ten men. Everybody say ten men. Yeah, that were all, they were all lepers. They were all lepers, listen to this, which stood afar off. Lepers could not be in the same vicinity that the public was in. They were outcasts. They were lepers. And he said these words, and he said to them, listen to this, they said to them, Master, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And boy, how many of you know that's exactly what you need and I need today? God, have mercy on me today. Hallelujah. And when he saw them... He said to them, listen to what he said, this is crazy. This is the only time you're going to find this in your Bible, in Scripture. He said these words, go show yourself unto the priest. Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they, as they went, as they went, listen to this, they were healed. As they were going, their bodies started becoming healed. I love this. And one of them, everybody say one of them. I thought there was 10, but only one's come back. Boy, it's crazy, Cray. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back. I love this. We miss this in our Bible so often. He turned back with a loud voice. And in one translation, it said a, with, a, with a megaphone voice. Like he had a megaphone up here like, Jesus. No, he went back. He turned back. He went to Jesus. And what he said with a loud voice, glorified God. And he fell down. I ain't falling down, but... We're going to get to that in just a moment. And he fell down on his face at his feet. He fell on his face, down at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Here's what we miss. Nine of them were Jews. And one of them was a Samaritan. Nine of them who were Jewish people come from the tribe, the, the rabbis, the Jewish people. And only one of them was a Samaritan, a stranger. And the one who looked like was the most farthest away from God, turned around and ran back to him and fell at his feet and started worshiping him. And Jesus answered him and said, were there not ten healed? Where's, where's the other nine? Where's the other nine? Did not I heal all of you? There, and he said, there are not found that return to give God glory. 
And I love this. He says, save the stranger. Save the Samaritan. And he said to him, listen to me very carefully, arise, 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 get up, rise, go thy way. Listen to what he says. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Not just heal you, but he said, your faith, I've never seen faith like this before. Your faith has made you whole. Not just heal you, but your faith has made you whole. Whole. Let me give you a backdrop really quick on what was going on at this time. People who had leprosy in those days were an outcast. Everybody say outcast. Yeah, they were outcasts from their families. What we don't realize is this. If you had leprosy, you would not be going home today. You would not. You wouldn't even be at church today because you was an outcast. You, wouldn't, you couldn't go home and you wasn't invited into the community. You had no communication with the public. I'm telling you, listen, we're blessed in here. If you were, if you was a leper and you you got seen out on the street somewhere, the, the, they would literally, the Jewish people would literally stop exactly what they were doing and they would say, leper, leper, leper. You say, Brian, that's loud. They done that back then. They embarrassed them. They were an outcast. They couldn't go home. Listen to me very carefully. They couldn't, they could not hold their children at nighttime. I thought about that. They were away from their wife. They were away from their husband. They were away from their children. They were an outcast. They were in a foreign land. Listen to me. They did not like the lepers so much. They kicked them out of Jerusalem into a leper colony. Man. They never received a birthday card like some of you do. They never went out to dinner or on a date night with their husband or their wife. They never received a hug or a smile. And you think you got it bad? See, leprosy was something that, that affected the nerve ending. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. Leprosy would affect the nerve ending. It would stop the blood flow. And how many of you know that the Lord just spoke into my spirit right now? What the enemy is wanting to do is stop the blood flow of God in his churches. He's wanting to stop it. Because listen to me, if you had leprosy and it affected the nerve ending... It would stop the blood, and listen to me very carefully. Here's what would happen if you had leprosy. Eventually, your fingers would fall off. Your toes would fall off. You say, Brian, that's nasty. No, that's leprosy. Listen, your eyes. Sometimes, I, I read a commentary. There was a man, and his eye literally got leprosy, and his eyeball literally fell out of his head. You'd be missing arms and limbs and legs and fingers and toes and nose. You couldn't hold your children. You was away from your family. And one translation said they, they called the lepers the walking dead. They were alive, but they looked so bad. They called them the walking dead lepers. And I want to show you all something. There was ten lepers that were healed. Everybody said they were all healed. Listen, you get that in your spirit. They were all healed. But only one was made whole. Only one out of the ten was made whole. And I'm going to preach this so y'all get this in your spirit. Because this is so important that we understand what was going on at this time. And listen, I truly believe, I truly believe we have a lot of churches and we have a lot of Christians today in the same situation and in the same stinking mindset. That's right. Listen, they all, they were settled for being healed but they'll refuse to be made whole. And we got people today that's sitting right beside you, in front of you, behind you, that listen, they may be healed, but I'm asking you today, are you made whole? There's a difference. There, there is a difference. See, listen to me. Healing, here's what healing means. You still have scars. Come on. You, you still have wounds. You still have hurt. You still have defect, but, but listen, being made whole, and I'm to hallelujah, being made whole is total, total, total restoration. No scars, no wounds, hallelujah, no implications of the past. You may look like you went some, some, through something, but there's no, there's no evidence that you have. Listen, God wants to make you whole. And I'm going to prophesy this over this church and over every church that preaches Jesus Christ. God did not die just to heal you. God, when Jesus Christ died, he had purpose behind the death. So many people are just being walking by and saying, well, Brian, I'm healed. 
but are you made whole? See, and that's, that's the word. That, that, that's, that's the word. Restoration. No scars, no wounds. God wants to make you whole. He wants his church to be whole. He wants his people to be whole. And listen, I, you, know, you know when people, I used to think when, when, when people could talk about their past, they were healed. That don't necessarily mean that. That does not necessarily mean that. There are people that sometimes talk about the past because they still look at the past. God wants to make you whole. God wants to restore his church, his people, marriages, pastors, deacons, congregation. He wants to restore you completely. Did y'all hear me? Completely. And I want to show you today, this is so cool, it's so cool, the process of you being made whole. It's in your Bible. And this is so good because, listen, I, all my life, mo the majority of my life, I have settled for being healed and not being made whole. So many people in here today, you are living on a 20-year past. Oh, you may be healed from it, and you don't have hatred like you used to, but are you made whole? Are you whole? No, no defects. <laughs> no wounds. No scars. I'm going to mess y'all up today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because I'm telling you, God dropped this word in my spirit, and I couldn't get over it. We went to 20 after 9 in the first service, and I still could have went on. Y'all in trouble. This is the second service. How to be made whole. In other words, I'm going to ask y'all something. How many of y'all want to be healed? Your hand, listen. Now I'm going to ask you this. Are you going to be satisfied we're just walking out of here today healed? Or are you going to be made whole? That is the difference. We got way too many marriages that say, well, we're healed. No, or you have a whole marriage. Are you, are you made whole? Are you complete? Are you strong in the Lord? I feel the Holy Ghost. I got to get to this. How to be made whole, number one. This is crazy, but this is what he said. If you want to be made whole, not just healed, not just healed, be made whole. Complete, complete restoration. That's what he said. I love the first thing God told the leper to do. <laughs> Luke 17, 14, here's what he said. Show, go show yourself to the priest. <laughs> what Jesus was saying was this. No doctor, no psychiatrist, nobody can touch you like a priest can touch you. What he was saying was this, and this is crazy, but this is what he said. He said, in other words, listen to me, you need to get in the house of the Lord. You, <laughs> you need to go to church. Well, I don't like church. Well, you're just going to get healed and not made whole. Listen to me, this is so good. He, the Bible says this, go to church. Get under a high priest. Get under his uh, teaching. Get under his anointing. Get under the favor of God in his life. You need a word from God because one word, hallelujah, one word from God will heal you, complete you, restore you, and make you whole. One word. Jesus. You can be, I'm talking more than even just being healed. You can be made whole. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm telling you, one word from heaven, one word from God, backed up by the, the anointing of God, can heal you, sir, touch you, sir, restore you, ma'am, and make you whole right now in Jesus' name. Can I tell you all this morning? Listen to me. I want to preach this for a moment. You can't fix the outside until you deal with the inside first. You cannot... Fix your situation on the outside, ma'am, until you deal with the true you on the inside first. You have to be fixed spiritually, hallelujah, before you can ever be touched physically. Some of you, I hear this all the time, well, I'm too bad to come to church. I, I can't come to church. Uh, no, they won't accept me or receive me. Listen to me. Your job, listen to me, is not to understand or not even to try to make humanity love you or like you. God is in love with you. He's crazy about you. And he wants to fix you and restore you. The Bible says, I love this, as they went, they were healed. Man, I felt that in my spirit this week. As they were going, as they were going to church. Yeah. As they were going, listen, how many of y'all can testify here today? I know some of your story. 
It may not have been the first time that you showed up at Elkhorn Baptist Church, but as you kept coming and coming and coming and coming and coming, I'm not giving up. I'm not stopping. I've got to get a word from God. I've got to get under the anointing of God. I've got to get a word from God. I've got to get my praise. Oh, come on. Evidently, some of you need a touch from God. Because I'm telling you, as you kept, as the Bible says, as they were going, listen, this is crazy. As they were going, their leprosy fell. Oh, y'all didn't hear a word I said. As they were going, all 10 of them, their scars, their wounds, their hurt dropped off their body. Uh, the Bible says they were all healed. All healed. And that brings me to number two. I love this. Man, this word is in my spirit strong right now. He said, get in the house of worship. Well, I don't think church is important. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, forsake not. Forsake not. Do y'all realize what could happen? You could be at the right place at the right time, and the right anointing will get all up on you, and it will change your mind and go from your mind down your body, and God can touch you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe what I'm preaching. I ain't backing off of it. He said these words. He said, he said, go get in the house of worship. He said, oh, listen to this. This is so crazy. Number two, he said, get your praise on. <laughs> Y'all know how important it is to participate. Not to spectate. Participate. Do y'all realize how important it is? Listen to this. Your wholeness may depend upon your worship. See, it's, I'm just telling you, I know where I come from. And people, when they say, Brian, you need to quieten down. You need to be quiet. Listen, you don't understand. He pulled me out of an alcoholic scene and put my feet up on a by standard of God. He brought me out of the bars and stood me up on a platform. And you're telling me to be quiet? He's done more for me than any, anybody's done for me. And you're telling me to be quiet? Have you lost your mind? I'm telling the people who have been down, praise the best. The people who have been through the valley of the shadow of death. The people who have experienced, I should have been dead a long time ago, have the best worship in their life. Whew, let me tell you, oh, hallelujah. You know what? Only 23% of America, the United States, goes to church. On, on, only. Only 23%, Jenna, go to church. Check me out. Y'all check me out. Google if you want to. He's always right. Google it. Only 23% of the United States goes to church. Y'all know how many, the percentage of Nigerians go to church? 84. 84% of the Nigerian people go to church. And they just don't go to church. They, I, they have testified, on my way to church, something started brewing inside of me. See, I've been driving to Elkhorn on a Sunday morning. I've been walking down my driveway on a Sunday morning, and something inside of me starts brewing, and I say, I can't wait to get into the house of worship. And oh, by the way, people over in Nigeria, they see miracles every time they meet. We have, as Americans, I hear this all the time, his miracles, his signs, and his wonders have ceased. I hear that. You get in trouble. If I, if I preach this sermon at some churches, it'd be a one-time invitation. It's all right. I've learned to conquer them. Because I'm telling you, listen to me. If you want to see signs, wonders, and miracles in your life, you've got to get into the house of worship and get your praise on. You've got to get to, you got to make your mind up. My neighbor's not stopping me. The person behind me is not stopping me. God's done brought me too far for me to shut up in my bones. I got a fire in my bones. Nothing can put it out. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to back up. I'm, I'm going to preach it up in Jesus' name. You say, oh, you need to settle down. No, you need to praise it up. See, God healed 10. Listen, God, God healed how many? But only one returned. Dr. Billy Graham said that is the statistics of America. He's right on it. 23%. Listen to me. Only one turned around and went back and praised God. One. 
See, there's power in praise. Jesus told the leper to get into the house of worship and get your praise on. And here's what the Lord spoke into my spirit, and I'm going to truck on. I will not resist or reject leper worship. Yeah, if you're a note taker, you write that down. God says, I will not resist or I will not reject leper worship. See, there is a difference than just coming to church and halfway participating or if you bring your leper worship in here. Let, let me tell you what leper worship is before I get to my third point. What is leper worship? Y'all ready? It's going to mess y'all up. Here it is. It is not praising God for what he has done. It's praising God for who he is. I'm going to say that again. See, I had some good word right there. It's not praising God for what he has done for you. It is praising God for who he is to you. I'm going to say it again. It's not what he does for you. It is who he is inside of you. Hallelujah. This brings me to my third point. Y'all with me? Somebody say, he's, I'm good. Come on, say, I'm good. Number three, this is, this is where we're going we're gonna to land this big 747. Number three, get into the presence of God and start praising him for who he is, not what he has done. Did y'all hear me? Who he is, not what he has done. Who he is, and not for all he has done. Oh, I am thankful, hallelujah, that I am saved. I am thankful. I am thankful for that. I am thankful that I have a house. I thank God I have a family. I thank God for my car, my job, my ministry. I thank God for promotions. I thank you for this and I thank you for that. I am happy. But listen to this. Most people praise God based on their week. If you have a bad week, you have a bad worship. Y'all come on, y'all look at me all like y'all got it all. I'm telling y'all, it is true. I, say, I hear it all the time. You, we worship God based on how yesterday was. We base, uh, if you're happy today, it's because something good happened to me yesterday. And so if I'm happy today, I worship good today. But if I'm not happy today, it dictates my worship today. Y'all know I'm preaching good. But the leper worship is worship that God will never resist or reject. It's not me thanking God for what he has done. It's me praising God for who he is. For who he is. Hallelujah. God, I praise you this morning because you are my Savior. God, I praise you this morning because you are Jehovah God. God, I praise you this morning that I am saved and born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. God, I praise you this morning that you are my King, my God, my rock, my shepherd, my shield. You are everything to me, God. I praise you. Oh, come on. I don't worship God just to get something. I worship him because he's already given me everything. Y'all hear me? I worship God, not for what he done, but for who he is. And when you guys start doing that, worshiping him for who he is to you, it changes everything. It changes everything. Because listen, it don't dictate your worship on Sunday because he's still God. <laughs> if, your, if your bills get paid or if your bills don't get paid, guess what? He's still God. Oh, come on now. If your car breaks down or your truck breaks down, I'm just saying, Mark, I'm just saying a little bit. He's still God. If five people show up at church on Sunday or 5,000 shows up at church on Sunday, hallelujah, he's still God. Whether he chooses to heal me or reject, whatever, he's still God, he's still Jehovah, he's still Rapha, he's still my God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter about my circumstances, no matter if you love me, like me, hate me, he loves me, likes me, and still in love with me. I praise him because he's worthy. Not because what he does for me. We are stinking spoiled. We're spoiled. These lepers, those Nigerian people, they ain't got a home. How can they worship? Huh. They don't have a dollar bill in their pocket. How can they go and stand three hours 
before worship even starts. How in the world do people do it? We're spoiled in America. I just wonder if you didn't have a choice to worship, would you worship? I'm just asking. If you had no choice to worship, would you worship? You say, well, Brian, that's a, that's a choice, isn't it? No, listen to me. That's our problem. See, God's been too good to me for me not to worship. God done brought me too far for me not to worship him. God's done, he's done did too much for me. See, I, I know there's a heaven, and I know there's a hell. And I'm going to miss hell, and I'm going to populate heaven. And I've got something in me. I've got a leper worship in me. I've got something in me that's not going to stop. You know what we need to do? We need to take 10 seconds and have leper worship in this congregation. Sometimes you just got to stand to your feet and say, God, thank you for everything you've done for me, God. Hallelujah. 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 God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to say something while y'all are standing. Now, I want y'all listening because this is crazy. This is where the rubber meets the road right here while y'all are standing. If God never answers another prayer, will you still have worship left? Leper worship. No, no, hold on. If God never does nothing else for you, do you still have leper worship? See, I, I'm, I'm the type of person, I go into a lot of churches and I teach. Here's the thing. It's like if God don't do it, we don't do it. If God don't heal me when I think I need to be healed, it affects my worship. See, here's what leper worship is. God, this is hard. If you don't answer another prayer, I'm still going to fall down. And I'm going to lift my head up to you, God. And God, worship you like it's my last worship service. That's what leper worship is. Not based on, you can be seated, not based on what you have, where you live, the pigmentation of your skin, what side of the track she was born on, how rich your mama, how rich your daddy was. Leper worship. There was 10, Eddie, that got, that got healed. But only one come back and say, God, Jenna, here's what he said. Even if you hadn't healed me, I'm going to worship you. Listen to me. I'm not a super pastor. God is still working on me. Come on. It's easy to sit out here and up here and say, Woo! If God never answers another prayer, will you worship him? And it's easy to sit there and say, Woo! Yes! Until you don't feel it. Until you don't see it. Until you don't experience it. And then all of a sudden, we'll find out where the true leper worships are at. How many of you know it's easy to worship him when things are going good? How many of you know it's easy to worship him when all your bills are paid, house looking good, yard mowed, dollar money in your pocket, everything, the children ain't acting cray cray? It's easy to worship him then. I'm talking about leper worship. I'm talking about, guys, listen to me. There's going to come a time in this world, according to the Bible, things are going to be stripped away from your life. We are blessed right now. I'm just asking you, if everything you had was stripped out of your life, everything, would you have a Job moment? You know what Job did? He stripped his clothes. He rent his clothes. He shaved his head. And he sat in a pile of ashes. And his three friends come along and they said, Job, what are you doing? 
Man, just confess you got sin in your life and God will take you home. His wife he even said, just curse God. Man, you, you're, our kids are dead. All ten of our children are dead. Our, our, our cattle is gone. Our lamb, our sheep, everything's gone. Job, we're stripped. If that's God, where's he at, Job? Ah, I love Job. He says, I know, woman, he's, it seems like he's not here. I know everything seems like it's been stripped out of my life. But one thing I know, and I'm naked sitting on a pile of ashes with my head shaved, my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer is alive. I know I may not look like much. I know I may not sound like much. But if I, I know my Redeemer lives. No matter what, I know my Redeemer lives. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So I'm telling you what God's doing in your pastor's life. He, he's messing me up. He's wrecking me every... I'm telling you, he's, it's, it's amazing what God will do if you'll just allow it. so easy to say God I want to go deeper and then when he strips you and takes you deeper all of a sudden we're like whoa that's good that's as deep as I want to go you know it's easy to say yeah, take all my sin but we still hang on to it it's so easy to pray and say God I surrender all oh, everything I got God I surrender I give it all to you and then he takes a little of it and we're sitting there going I didn't mean that So, I want to give you this, and I'm going to tie it up. We got too many Christians settling for just being healed and not made whole. Can I tell y'all what God dropped in my spirit Friday? This is so good, and I got to give it to you. See, the nine lepers, Allison, went back home healed, but they were missing body parts. Y'all hang with me. Nine of them were Jews, the synagogues, the rabbis. They were made healed. They were healed. But watch this. They went home with their nose still missing, their fingers still missing, their toes still missing. The only thing they were healed from was leprosy. Y'all got me? Say amen. amen. I'm going somewhere. I'm tying this up. So they went home. They could hold their wife. They could hold their children. They could go back to work. They didn't have leprosy, but they also had missing body parts, missing fingers. Can I tell y'all what being made whole is? I'm going to mess y'all up. Here's what being made whole is. I don't know, Eddie, when that one leper, when he come back to Jesus. See, listen, he was healed at that time. Y'all got me? Everybody say, he was healed. But something happened, Dylan. You're on the edge of that seat, aren't you, boy? Something happened. While he was in the presence of God, I don't know how many fingers he was missing, how many toes he was missing. I don't know if his nose was missing or if an eye was missing. But Allison, one thing I do know, as he was worshiping, all of a sudden, here come a finger, here come a finger, here come a finger, here, here come a finger, here come a finger, hey, here come a finger. His nose grew back out. His, eye, his eyes come back in his head. He got made whole. Woo, somebody give God a praise on that one. I'm, oh, come on, praise his name. I'm talking about dead things come back to life. Woo! Hallelujah. I ain't playing. I know some of y'all are looking at me like preacher done lost his ever-loving mind. See, I believe. I believe as they were worshiping. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, bing. Y'all look at That's all right. Go, go ahead. Bing. I'm talking about, listen. Should make you a Holy Ghost. Things that were missing in his life came back. I'm, I'm going to let me prophesy just a little bit. Some of you are missing things in your life. And I'm telling you, if you'll get to the house of worship and get your worship on and praise him, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
Praise him for who he is. Not what you have in your back pocket. Not what you're going home to. Not where you work or your prestige or your style or anything like that. But praise him for who he is. That's all it's worth. And I'm telling you, things that were dead will come back in your life. Oh, yeah. See, I've read the Bible. Here's what I believe. Some of y'all looking, that's all right. I believe in the last days. Matter of fact, watch this. Over Nigeria, fingers grow back. Now in America, here's how we do it. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know about that. We start doubting. We start questioning. Fear sets in. I pray for the day. If they're a leper and they come to this church, as they're coming to church, the leprosy will fall. I pray that blind people will see again at this church. I pray that if somebody's missing a finger, y'all will look at me all y'all want to, but it will grow back. They just won't be healed, but they'll be made whole in Jesus' name. How many of y'all have accepted just healing and not wholeness? Praise team, you guys come. <laughs> you're, you're, you're healed, but you're not made whole. You're, watch this, you're still missing some things in your life. Oh, you have forgiven people, but they've not heard it. The wholeness hadn't come. The wholeness haven't come. I, I really believe this with all my heart. I believe there's such a profound faith in this church. Maybe not by everybody. But the Bible says where two or three come together touching in a grin. I'll be in the midst. So watch this. All it takes is you and God. Y'all make the majority. Y'all make two. And God said, I just don't want to heal you. Y'all come y'all please. Listen to me very closely. God says, I just don't want to heal you. I want to make you whole. Now, I don't know what your wholeness looks like. But here's my biggest concern. I believe churches are leaving healed, but not made whole. Boy, you can tell when the Holy Ghost is in the house. You can. You can just tell. You can just tell. Y'all listen. He's speaking. God loves you. Too many of you have accepted just being healed and not made whole. God's not finished with you. God is not finished with you. I remember Kurt Bond. I'd done a revival one evening and Kurt showed up. And Kurt, he walked in with a cane. He's here. He, he, he'll tell you. He walked in with a cane, Greg. And I said, Kurt, what's wrong with you? He said, my back. I'm down in my back, Brian. Then being the doctor, he said, man, I, I'm taking me. I, I, I don't know what else to do. And Kurt went to the altar that night. And that night, so help me God, I went down there where he was at, and I put my hand right, just right there on his back where it was hurting. And it wasn't me. I just believe. I just believe. The Bible says you'll be able to lay hands upon a sick and they shall recover. That's what the Bible says. Quit fighting about it. And that night, so help me, from, from the bottom of his feet, all, I felt it rising. A fire. 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 A fire was starting to rise up in him. And so help me God, the same came that he walked in with, he carried out because God still heals. He made him whole. So I'm just telling y'all in Jesus' name, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> y'all gonna do that anyway. You're gonna do it anyway. I, ain't, I, can't, I can't change y'all's mind. I can preach till three o'clock. Red face, red eared. Give a profound rhema word from God. But y'all are going to do what you want to do. 
You can walk out healed, still missing stuff. Or, I just see him going to church, and all of a sudden, man, that stuff's falling off my body. That leprosy is falling off my body. Oh, my God. Leprosy is falling off. I know y'all look at me like, Brian, this happened. It's in your Bible. That word is right. That word is going to stand. That word you'll be judged by. It. I highly advise you to listen to the word of God. And all of a sudden, the nine kept going. Oh, God, we get to go home. But one, the Bible says he turned. I got to find Jesus. <laughs> he ran. The Bible says Jesus saw him at a distance. I love this story. God, I love this story. It's my life. See, a lot of you may not have leprosy on the outside, but some of you may have leprosy on your heart today. Some of you may have inside leprosy in your life. Oh, everybody looks good on the outside, but what about the inside? He got to Jesus. The Bible says he fell. And I love God. I was like, why are you here? Where's the other nine? It wasn't 10 of you healed? Yes, God, they were. But listen, I didn't come back to thank you for healing me. I just come back because of who you are. Whether you healed me or not, Hallelujah. I'm going to worship you, God. Whether you answer my prayers or not, God, I'm going to worship you, God. Whether you move that mountain or not, God, I'm going to worship you, God. I'm going to worship you, oh God. Even if you did not heal me. And I love this. I love this. I love this, Dylan. I love this. Y'all with me? Say amen. We're almost done. I've never seen faith like that before. By your faith, you're not healed. See, Isaiah 55 says, by his stripes you are healed. We're under grace now, Greg. Huh. Huh. By your faith, you are made. Bing, bing. Bing, oh God. Everything that the enemy had stolen off his body started coming back. His toes started growing out again, Bobby. His eyes he could see again. His nose grew out. His fingers grew out. All the rest of the nine went home. They went home. They got home. They could hold their children. They could hold their wife. But guys, listen to me. Don't just go home. Just halfway blessed or halfway healed. God says, Elkhorn, Elkhorn, I want to make you whole. I want to make you whole. I want every finger to grow out, every eye to come back. I want your heart to be on fire for me once again. Sure. Don't settle for just being healed. When God wants to make you whole, He wants this side to be made whole. Y'all ready? Raise your hands. It's just this side. Right? Just this side. Everybody raise your hands. God, in Jesus' name, make them whole don't just heal them make them whole right now in Jesus name amen I want this, this session raise your hands come on come on raise your hands everybody come on God I don't know what they're going through but God today things that they have lost in the past God make them whole today don't just heal them, make them whole. In Jesus' name, amen. This section, come on, raise your hands. Come on, everybody raise your hands. God, every person that's handed is raised. God, just don't heal them. Just don't heal their outside. God, heal their inside. Make them whole, complete them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. This side, come on. Everybody raise your hands. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This ain't no joke. God, every hand that is raised, just don't heal them. Make them whole. Make them whole.
in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I'm telling you, listen. God gave me this word. It's up to you now to respond. Are you just going to walk away and say, God, I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. Or are you going to turn around today, turn around today, run toward him, fall at his feet, and say, God, if you don't do nothing else for me, God, I worship you for who you are. So, God, I've done what you called me to do. Hallelujah. What a beautiful spirit's in this house. So God, all the way from side to side, front to back, top to bottom, may we be made whole today. Not just healed, but made whole. May all your marriages be made whole. May your sickness be made whole. May your lives be made whole today. So in Jesus' name, you guys stand. This altar's open. This altar's open. You come. You come as God is dealing with you. Amen.